Thank you for joining us, uh, the P3 show, which is a community uh, program where we invite community members, including public leaders in our city of Burlington, Vermont, to talk about the state of affairs in our city, including community safety, public health, um, all emerging issues, such as social issues as well, or any other issues that may be of importance to our city. Uh, today, I am very, very excited to have none other than our fire chief, uh, that is Chief Lachance, and I am incredibly grateful for him to have made the time, and I could be more grateful, so I hope you will forgive me for keep saying that again and again. Thank you, Romeo. I appreciate the, appreciate you having me. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I know your schedule is full, so we'll try to make it as expeditiously as possible. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a great day today. Today is, uh, this week was Fire Prevention Week, so we have an event uh, happening on Pine Street. So uh, we're there with our fire prevention trailer and our fire, um, our fire extinguisher prop and things like that. Some nice, uh, it's a nice event for families to come and check out. Perfect. Thank you so much. So we're going to get started in earnest. And uh, the first issue that I wanted to us to focus on is the challenges or emerging challenges, novel public health issues that creates probably either for problems or opportunities for the fire department here in Burlington, Vermont. What are some of the things that you see are emerging issues post-COVID, pre-COVID that since you've been uh, the fire chief and maybe a little bit prior to that, that you see that you possibly think is very challenging to the city and to yourself and to the, to the amazing team that you have at the department. And what are some of the challenges that poses for them and for you, plus what are the opportunities that you see that can help uh, our fire department members? Yeah, so I've been w with the city of Burlington for 25 years, and uh, I started just like a lot of my folks, right on the, as an entry level firefighter EMT, working on the ambulance uh, back in the early 2000s um, and promoted up to where, where I am today, which um, I was promoted or appointed the fire chief uh, under the Weinberger administration. Um, and a lot of the challenges we see today that we've seen for years, um, you know, Drug use is not a new thing in the fire service uh, or in, 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 in this community. Um, and what we're seeing is just an exasperation of that, it seems. Uh, homelessness is not a new thing in this community. What we're seeing is, is an exasperation of that. Um, COVID was, was a difficult thing to get through. I think that it gave people, uh, it put them in a very difficult spot in their in their lives. Um, some people it really shut down their lives and it caused them to um, be in a really difficult place. And we're seeing that. Uh, we're seeing that that uh, folks are just struggling to, um, to be. And um, what happens is it does kind of filter down to the emergency services level. Um, we're seeing a lot of folks that are um, are houseless, um, that are struggling with substance abuse, and um, I think the biggest struggle for for us is trying to get those folks um, to a place of, uh, you know, to a place that we're, 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 we feel like we're really having a positive impact on them, and we're we're helping them pass the cycle of ambulance ride to the hospital and then back to the street and it feels like we're st we're stuck more and more in that cycle of really trying to help trying to be out there always always responding when we're called and we get them to the hospital and we get them help and then sometimes the hospital isn't wh where they need to be um, and what we're finding is there's really limited places for them to be um, so the cycle continues. They're back out, and then we are called again as that primary care. And it's a it's a it's a tough cycle for the person, and it's also a tough cycle for the responder. Um, we we all got into this business to make an impact, and it's very difficult to feel like you're making a positive impact when 
you're stuck in this cycle of response to the same folks uh, suffering from the same issues, and it seems like there's no way out. Right, right. I appreciate it. And I can see those um, challenges, I would suspect, would cause additional resources to be spent. Because, of course, there should be no uh, cost spared when it comes to saving lives and taking care of folks. But at the same time, um, is, do you see the cost of response kind of rising based on the additional brand new challenges that your team faces? Because it's definitely a lot different than what it was prior to COVID versus what we have. That's not to say that, of course, um, uh, some sense of abuse disorder did not exist. It's, it still existed, but almost like there's a hyper reaction now than we've seen in the past. Is that? Well, it's it's funny. There is. It, it does seem as though there uh, there are more incidents uh, that have to do with substance abuse disorder now than there were pre-COVID. Uh, the numbers do show that as well. Uh, I think what's interesting is. Um, <laughs> it's almost like the community is getting used to it. Mm. And that's something that uh, saddens me. Um, there's times that we, we won't get a call for somebody or, or they'll call, somebody will call and keep on driving um, just to say, you know, somebody's, somebody looks like they're possibly overdosed and we get dispatched to it and the person that called is no longer there. And right, right. sometimes the person's overdosed, but Oftentimes they're not. Oftentimes they're either experiencing the effect of their chosen substance or they are maybe houseless and just resting. Right. And um, so, you know, we do get a lot of calls for that kind of thing, but we, it just, it, it saddens me to see a community start to f normalize what they're seeing. Right. Um, and th I think if anything's changed, it's that. Okay. Do you, do you see, um, and I know I'm glad that you mentioned that we're becoming more desensitized, as it were, to some of the stuff that are happening. Do you see any um, community more engagement in trying to help the department and maybe some ideas that maybe they call in and say, hey, this is what maybe we can volunteer to do to help the department and meet these incredible challenges as an opportunity, or are there any specific programs maybe you might be thinking of in the future that might be a an opportunity to engage much more robustly, as it were, to well, what's happening. I think what needs to happen is I think we need to have more of a combined effort. Okay. I feel like services, and, and, and when I speak of this, I'm not just speaking of Burlington. This is this is a, an issue across our country. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like a lot of, there's a lot of kind of siloing of services. And, you know, the police department has, they're, they're doing amazing work in the community with their CAPE team and their officers are, are, are great. Uh, the fire department's doing great work with our, our regular response and with our CRT team. Um, there's all kinds of other arms of, of public safety that I see. I mean, our library folks in Burlington are doing great work. They're doing work that's above and beyond mm -hmm. um, their pay grades. The marketplace folks, same thing. The the DPW folks, they're they're out doing work that's not in their job descriptions. Uh, we're, it's kind of an all out effort in this city to to try to keep things as as normal as possible. Um, and, and there's a lot of people doing a lot of great work. I think that um, we just need to have understanding that there are a lot of folks struggling out there. And what we need is a way to support them past this cycle of EMS, hospital EMS. Right, right, right. Um, which looks routine almost. Which looks routine almost. And, you know, we need to find that next level of care. Mm -hmm. And um, what I struggle with sometimes is folks are struggling and they are, you know, it's hard to have somebody who maybe is suffering mental health crisis um, and is struggling to make a rational choice for themselves, one that seems clear to you and I, um, and then they, they just, you know, we have a system that's predicated on them making these rational choices, predicated on them saying, I'm ready f to accept help. Right. And the help is offered. Mm -hmm. It's offered by 
all these different services that are out there, mm -hmm. folks are just choosing, uh, I'm not saying all, but some folks are just choosing not to engage with it because it's either they've had a bad experience in the past uh, or they have engaged and it hasn't worked or they're just not ready to. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, it's like, okay, how many times can you say no? How many times can you not engage in, in the help that's offered before um, you're compelled into um, some of that? Right. And, you know, at what point is the, the negative impact of your choices, does that play a part into the overall community? Right. You know, what I'm noticing in that, because I do work at the bus station, and um, some of the calls that are made to uh, the fire department is not necessarily not a, a call that is technically meant for the fire department to respond, because when I genuinely think of the fire department, it's like responding to a burning building or a very serious issue where it like requires, because you guys are more, uh, both not only a emergency response team, but also almost like a, an EMT folks, where like you diagnose people, no, well, I don't know if I would call diagnose, but no, like we, help people before even they go to hospital. Yeah, we are certainly that. Almost we, like we, we are We are fire and EMS for the city. Okay. Okay, so we, we are a paramedic level agency. Right. We do paramedic level care. All of our responders are either advanced EMTs or paramedics. Okay. Um, all of our fire trucks are staffed with those folks. Our fire trucks have the ability to do the EMS care needed that the ambulances can do. The only thing the fire trucks can't do is transport the patient. So, okay. so that's why sometimes you see that fire truck there first and you right. say, why in the heck is there a fire truck here? And it's because right. everybody on the fire truck is uh, educated to the level of advanced EMS work, and we do have the equipment to uh, do that advanced EMS work prior to the ambulance's arrival. Okay. Are there any, like, um, brand new um, issues that are called into the department that we, the public are not necessarily aware of it, or is this just overdoses and, you know, other, like, typical calls for, like, violence or whatever, where you guys respond? Is there any brand new issues you guys respond to that is superseding what's already going on or is this just where we're at at this point? I think it's overall it's where we're at. Um, I think the new aspect of emergency response for the fire department is um, responding to things kind of on our own. Um, we used to respond, we used to have a very large police department presence when we would respond to all kinds of things. Okay. And what we're seeing now is that the capacity just isn't there from the police department with their current staffing levels. Right, right, right. And um, what, what I'd like people to understand is yeah. those staffing levels directly impact the fire department. Okay, is that uh, a we, positive or negative? Well, it's, an, it's a negative okay. uh, that, okay. that their staffing level, levels aren't where they need to be. Okay. Um, I know they're working really hard to get them there, people, yeah. um, but we, you know, there are brothers in blue yes. and and <laughs> yeah. we are, you know, two arms uh, of, of public body. safety and we rely on each other wholly uh, to, to, to be um, like do our jobs in a really complete True. way. True. Our, our folks rely on them for scene safety mm -hmm. and uh, they rely on us for the EMS work and the fire, the fire work and uh, one without the other isn't an efficient system. True, true. No, I, I, I agree with you 100% on that. And I think the, uh, the complementary part of it is that um, they also face the same issues that, you know, the fire department members and your, your office is facing. And um, what I was wondering is that how is, as part of just the whole responding to any uh, emerging issues, how's the, how has it been the cohesion? in terms of responding to these issues? Has, has it been difficult or has it been smooth sailing for? for, for it, if there's any difficulty, it's it's the lack of capacity of the police department. Got it, got but when we it. respond together, um, I feel like we work really well together okay. in the street. Um, okay. I feel like everybody knows where they, where one department starts and the other department ends. And, and when we are able to respond together, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like it goes really well. I do feel like the, the officers and the firefighters, although they are two different, very different jobs, um, we do work together well in the street. And, and honestly, we really like when they, they come by and they shoot the breeze with us. And we're able to, you know, I think that that relationship is important to foster. Right. Now, the just in, in terms of responding to any new issues or 
challenges that, like how is the staffing level and does that create challenges for the fire department at this time based on all the emerging issues that are happening post COVID as mm -hmm. we're in right now in, in our city. And I know this is not unique to Burlington mm -hmm. as, as you stated earlier, and that is, that is totally understandable. But uh, are you guys having challenges in terms of getting new people based on that per se? Um, well, yeah. The the when I sat for my fire department uh, job, uh, we sat for the written test. It was at Burlington High School in 1998. That was. Is it difficult, uh, by the way? Well, it was. It was not easy. Okay. But there was probably 300 plus people sitting at wow at uh, Burlington High School to take that written test. Um, we all. They, they graded it right then, then they gave us our, our uh, time for our physical agility test. Mm -hmm. And we, we did that and we had this big list of folks that could go into the fire department. Now, right. I struggle to find enough folks, you know, to, to get a dozen people to interview. Wow. Um, and uh, when I do get a dozen people to interview, I offer jobs. I, I wanna say the last time I offered seven or eight jobs to get five people to accept. Okay. Um, so it's it certainly isn't uh, as competitive as it was. Um, and I really, you know, it's a, it's a great job. Right. Uh, again, I've been in the fire service for 30 years in, in Vermont um, and 25 with the city of Burlington. And, you know, you talk to any of the folks, uh, you know, we have, our, we have our up days and our down days, but you talk to any of them and they'll, you know, the, the, the general feeling is it's the best job in the world. Um, that is really and awesome. if you really want to feel like you are, are making an impact and you are helping your community, it's a great way to go. Right. Um, but that's where we struggle is sometimes we get stuck in that, uh, that kind of rotation of feeling like we're not making an impact, we're not helping people. And that's, if you're going to um, take the wind out of the sails of a responder, that's how you do it. Right, right. No, I, I appreciate that. And uh, I know um, it's not easy um, to be in the situation that they're in. I, I can appreciate um, the challenges they're, they're uh, and the task as it were they're taking on because I know it's not easy so uh, definitely pass my best wishes to them for the hard work that they put in. Um, we're going to move on to our next segment which is the uh, uh, community response team which I think is a brand new to a certain degree because it's just recently kind of set up the program for with the new team members so the community um, response team yeah it's a pilot okay. um it started uh we brought it to the weinberger administration um around the first of october okay uh we were seeing huge responses to overdoses and folks that were just uh showing as unresponsive we were right. getting calls for unresponsive folks um the uh, police department has their cares team that they've been working really very diff very hard to, to stand up but again it's a staffing mm. thing and the firefighters were really interested in, in trying to do something more than what we do with a typical response right. and uh, and so they said hey chief can you just give me a pickup truck just let me let me respond to these things in a pickup truck or let me just drive around and talk to folks and I, I heard that from two of my employees and at first I was like well that's not what we do right <laughs> yeah. um, and then uh, I kept hearing it and I said well let's let's give it a shot so we made a pitch to the Weinberger administration and, and Moreau uh, was very interested and we brought it to the council and they were very supportive and I, I kind of took a chance that they would be and I um, I started hiring for the team two weeks before right, right. <laughs> I, had, I had the approval so that I'd be able to upfit it very quickly if okay. we get, get, get the approval. Okay. Uh, ultimately, we did, and our first shift was the 16th of October. That's amazing. Uh, we upfit it in about two weeks. Wow. And, and we used existing equipment. We used the, the, the pickup truck that we already have. Our plow truck is what we used. Okay. Um, we bought some EMS equipment. We got some funding from the opioid settlement funds okay. where the city received. And uh, we staffed it. We were averaging about 50 or 60 hours a week. We staff it with voluntary overtime. Right. So the firefighters are at their overtime rate uh, on their days off, and that's what we were staffing it with. Um, we got kind of a core group of folks that were really into it. Okay. The CRT is, was a response unit. It was responding to calls for overdose that were outside. Okay. Um, and there were also a a unit that would go around and do some preactive work with folks. Okay. Um, we would we would be able to meet people where they are. We would hand out bandaging supplies, Narcan leave-behind kits, 
Um, and, and honestly, we have a binder of, pl of uh, uh, services that we can offer folks. Okay. And that's what we were doing. We were meeting people. We were, okay, what, what do you need? And maybe giving them a, uh, a, a kind of a, a path toward something, mm -hmm. you know, right, to give right. them some, some hope. And right. that there's there's something more, and it just it just got our folks out there interacting with with people in a different way. Right. So what what is the current number of the CRT members, as it were? Because I know you said it's an overtime. Well, it's work. it's it's the a... members are anybody at the fire department who wants to take a shift. Okay. It's okay. The guardrails are. Um, so it's not a unit. It's just anybody who wants to. Take yeah, it's right? anybody who wants to. Take, the guardrails are low, and the reason the guardrails are low is because. We all have our strengths, and we all have something that we can give. And what I can give, Romeo, might be a little different than what you could give. True, true. And that's okay, because if we work together, we'll fill those voids that get created mm -hmm. just in life. Right, right. Um, so I really wanted my folks to be able to feel like, okay, today I, I'm really good at maybe interacting with um, somebody in crisis. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to really focus on that. Or I'm, I'm really good at... Um, in, uh, working with some of the some of our providers that we have um, or our options for folks, and I want to create that relationship, and I want to bring that relationship back into the fire station and and spread that information. Or I'm really good at meeting with uh, business owners, and I'd like to just stop in and, and let them know we're there and leave them a business card and say, if you guys need us, call us. Um, and and so I wanted people to of all different strengths to be able to work on that unit and and fill all kinds of different voids in this in the city that is awesome um what 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 impact do you think this is having on the city so far based on when you started that initial those two employees approach to you to, to date what do you think the impact looks like well uh, right now today it's actually it's it's been difficult to staff it okay. um it was difficult to staff it through the summer um just because it's summer and Kids are home, and our firefighters want to be home with their families. Uh, they want to go camping just like everybody else. So, uh, staffing the CRT this summer it was a, it was quite limited. Um, we're starting to pick up right now. We we I think we have a staff for um, 20 to 24 hours this week. Okay. Um, so you'll see firefighters out, I believe, Wednesday and Thursday this week. Oh, good, good, good. Um, but the impact, you know, that I've seen, I'm, I'm hoping that it has an impact on the overall overdose numbers. Uh, we have handed out hundreds of uh, Narcan Leave Behind kits. Mm -hmm. um, we've handed out hundreds of of pieces of bandaging supplies for folks. Some folks suffer from xylazine wounds. Um, I'm hoping that the, the the community sees it. They they see us out there and they just feel like okay. There's the fire department, and, and it just gives them a kind of a, a feeling like there's somebody out there, right, 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 you know, right. above above what the other departments are doing. Gotcha. Um, but I, what I also want is I want my folks at the fire department to feel like we're trying something different. We're not just using them um, in a way that feels uh, like we're just using them. Right. You right. Know, to, absolutely. To, to, perpetuate this cycle right, right. and uh, we're, we're listening to them and we're taking their ideas and mm. we're trying to run with them. Honestly, it's nobody has answers to this. If we did, uh, every community in this country would follow suit. Uh, right. We're all doing our best to try to make it a positive impact for our community and and uh, this is what the fire department is trying. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I really appreciate it. I know we have about roughly five minutes or something like that. Um, I wanted to ask you um, just quickly on if within five minutes that's okay with you, a better resources for the fire department, but also how are you really doing? Because I yeah. know you have a lot on your shoulders and I can tell just through, I'm not a mind reader, but, but there's something tells me that there's a heavy shoulders on you, that they get a lot of burden on you and it's just, it kind of sub, to a certain degree permeates out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering how are you doing really post being the fire chief and uh, being the fire chief rather and just th in terms of the needing resources for the department and yeah just tell yeah. me well right right now we're we we started our lateral hiring process it's the first time we've ever offered a lateral hiring process how a lateral hiring process is different from a uh, entry level is we're trying to attract folks that are in the fire service already so they they can come and we can maybe start them at a at a little higher pay rate 
they can afford to move their family to Burlington from anywhere across the country and, and have a pay rate that is uh, satisfactory to life, right, here in Vermont. Yes. Um, you know, so keeping those staffing levels up is, is very important. I think what weighs the heaviest on me is a, allowing my employees to feel like I care and that they're supported. Um, I, I understand um, that it's hard. It's a hard job. What they're doing isn't easy. And uh, it's hard to sometimes to feel like I hear them, but it's hard to feel like I'm impactful for them on the, on the ground today. Everything, the wheels of progress move very slowly. Right, right, right. And I think everybody wants what's best for everybody, true, right? True, true. Um, but there's so many different ways to get there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of mucking through that, um, those conversations that can sometimes feel like you're in this quagmire. Right. And I think that's where I feel right now is that I really want my folks to feel like this, they're supported by me, they're supported by their community, mm -hmm. they're supported by each other, mm -hmm. um, and that what they're doing matters. What they're doing makes a difference, because it does. Mm -hmm. But I understand that sometimes it feels like it doesn't. Right, right. And right. so, um, because I, I'll tell you right now, the, the, the quickest way to run somebody out of public safety is to make them feel like they're not being, making an impact. I agree, I agree with you 100%. And so, so that's where I am uh, right now. I think that's what weighs the most on me is, is you know, yes, I want to keep employees. I don't want a lot of turnover. Right. Um, but the way to keep employees is to allow them to feel like they're, they're having a positive impact on the community. Well, I appreciate that. And I, I just want you to know that as, and I, you know, I, I speak for myself because I don't know, um, with most people whom I've spoken to, with the, just their view of um, the fire department, you has always been positive. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that everybody knows the amount of responsibilities that you and your team carries in, in terms of responding to a lot of things and things that I see on a day-to-day -day basis because I'm out there in the public interacting with almost everybody you can see in the city because they have to go through the bus station. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I could just see in their eyes that every time your department members respond, they're very glad that they're there. They're very glad that they're mm -hmm. attending to the issues and they're very, um, in an expedited manner, take care of the issue and keep moving. Mm -hmm. So I hope that, and I know this is not just a Burlington issue, as you alluded to earlier multiple times, and that there's a better resources provided to you and your team and that we can somehow find a way to better help them not only have all the resources they need, but also have that communal experience mm -hmm. with members of the community and uh, city members. And now that Burlington is getting more people moving in here from around the world, including myself, who's from Somalia originally, um, we will work better to make sure that you guys feel not only welcome into the city, th everything that you all do, but also hopefully find a programs, communal programs that you know, I think the cops have, uh, or the police rather, <laughs> have a, a dawn a day or something. I don't know what it is, but some kind of program. I think there's one already happening, as you said earlier. Um, but something better, you know, than what it is today. Because just watching everything that is happening with in our city and just seeing, sometimes I'll be honest with you, I see they have a little bit of a long face because you can kind of tell they're dealing with so much going on. And uh, it is a thankless job that you all do. You know, and so uh, my heart goes to you and goes to the team members out at the, at the department. And we push you guys, not only you, but the men in blue as well. Yes. It's not that we, we want to be uh, difficult, but it's just that we care about the issues as much as you all do. And we want to be supportive and helpful. And hopefully, if there's anything you can take away from this show is that Burlington is behind you, yeah. and not only in your, your team, but everything that you stand for. And I'll say this, we do feel like Burlington's behind us. We okay. do get a lot of really nice notes from folks, um, cards, thank you cards, and uh, bring, we had, I had three boxes of cupcakes on the oh, table good. at Station One the other day, which we really <laughs> appreciated. And, okay. you know, it's it's definitely, we, we do feel that support. Never, There's never a time that I'm speaking, uh, maybe at council or anything, where the fire department has an initiative that I don't feel honestly fully supported by the the city administration mm -hmm. and the residents of the city mm -hmm. uh, and we really appreciate that support absolutely absolutely and i'm and i'm glad that uh everybody's putting their you know 
as, as they say, where their mouth, the money is. And hopefully that continues to keep happening. I know the resources to a certain degree scarce, but hopefully that increases with time with, based on, I would say, with the appropriate uh, resolutions being passed at the council level. So without further ado, I appreciate it for taking the time. I know you're a busy man and family man as well. So I'm not going to keep you longer than you have to be here. <laughs> so, um, thank you. Do you want to say one last word or what would you like to say? Oh, no, I just, I, listen, I just really appreciate the, the time uh, being here. And uh, uh, again, I just, I, I do appreciate this city. And I, I really want to see um, this city at its best. And I think everybody does. It's just a matter of how do we get there. And uh, I think we get there by uh, taking down silos and working together um, in a more you know, kind, of, kind of cohesive way uh, to, to get, this, get this community to where we all know it can be. Right. Thank you. And as one of the counselors said to you in the past, keep those data coming. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I want to thank uh, Chief Lachance from our police fire department here in Burlington, Vermont, for being on the show. I am incredibly grateful, and uh, this has been a very uh, immersive experience on what's going on right now at the uh, fire department, at the response levels, and some of the challenges that they face over there, and what as community members can do to help better uh, the fire department, department members. And uh, I hope that you will join me in the future when you ever get a chance. And uh, thank you for joining us. And I look forward to discussing uh, additional uh, ideas and, and suggestion in the future with community members. You're more than welcome to join me. It is uh, the th second Saturday of every month. So thank you for joining me again. Have a wonderful day. And we're done. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, my